Okay. Thanks a lot for joining today. Um, I'm Suman Kanaganti. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Personal AI. Joining me today is uh, Sharon Zahn. She's also in the room. Uh, she'll be joining us for question and answers uh, later. Um, today, we are talking a lot about Model 2. Uh, so we'll be talking quickly the facts as well as a um, little bit open up on the architecture, what is exactly is happening behind the scenes uh, with personal language models. We'll dig deeper into that. But we'll spend uh, around you know 15 to 20 minutes uh, going through the use cases in the actual application and also highlight some of the customers that we have and how people are implementing personal AI and for what reasons. Uh, so let's jump right in. We will have ample amounts of time for Q&A uh, towards the end of the uh, presentation as well as the demo. Jumping in, quick facts. Um, our company is um, uh, established in 2020. We are called Human AI Labs. Personal AI is the product of the from the company, Human AI Labs. Um, it, it's Since 2020, we've been doing business as personal AI. Now, the interesting thing is through our development of personal AI over the past uh, three to four years, it has now become a category and it is widely used. So there is often some confusions. Uh, so, you know, real quickly, if you are dealing with us, uh, personal AI, or your personal AI, the official domains are personal.ai or personal-ai.com, uh, because, you know, given how popular the keyword is, uh, there is a lot more representation of it. Uh, we do own the trademark, so that's another way to uh, authentically say which one is personal AI. We have around 10 patents and a patent uh, uh, white paper as well pending that we will be releasing later this year. Uh, I have a good number of people who ask me this question. No personal AI has no association with open AI. Uh, so that's that's also a matter of fact. Uh, we'll jump into the model basics and model architecture. It may get a little bit technical, uh, but the intention is also to give transparency and visibility into what is going on underneath the scenes. Uh, basics, PLM. Um, it's a keyword that we talk quite a bit. It, we refer to it as a personal language model. From an architectural standpoint, it is very similar to a small language model, and it is independent of a LLM. Um, each personal language model has an identity as well as an owner. Every AI response from a personal language model is attributed back to that identity, and the ownership of the model itself belongs to whoever has trained it or whoever has created it. Each PLM has its own memory. That is a fundamental to a personal language model. Um, and the memory itself that the model possesses is not shared with any other models. So every model is unique, every memory is discrete, and every memory discrete is associated with the model. PLM also trains continuously. So it is not a pre-trained model as much as with every new memory, it is going into your model and learns within less than five minutes. Um, each personal language model also has its own API endpoint. Um, it's represented in the domain address of your personal.ai domain. Uh, so it's not open AI API endpoint, your model API endpoint. <clears throat> so those are like quick basics. I think that's the majority of the factual information that people normally ask us about. Getting a little bit more into the model architecture itself. You know, the way we think about it is large language models which is covering majority of the external knowledge, uh, our domain knowledge. You know, we seek, we learn, and we uh, essentially create new memories. However, over a period of time, with our experiences, we capture our internal experiences, internal learning, internal synthesis and opinions of how we perceive the world that is captured in the personal language model. So we think about it as more of complementary to the large language model, which we learn from new memories, that is then being remembered, and then we create new memories. Uh, that is the missing gap that we are addressing, which is on the other spectrum of personal or private knowledge. From an ownership standpoint, we all understand large language models are generally owned by big tech or specific companies doing specific domain uh, models. Uh, that is on the left-hand side, uh, general intelligence or large language model intelligence. In the case of PLMs, Every individual model is unique and user gets to own the data and user also gets to train the data. In other words, the company, Personal AI, is not ingesting any data whatsoever into any model uh, to influence the model itself, which is contrary to majority of the companies that you will likely see. PLMs, uh, given the foundational architecture, they also do not uh, have any limitations on the memory. It's fundamentally based on the uh, memory system. 
for example, in LLM, you may have referred to the context limitation that you know starts to play to around 40,000 words. Uh, in personal AI scenario, everything is in memory. In contrast to the fine-tuned LLM techniques that exist out there, our benchmarks have shown 40x cost effective in terms of the uh, memory usage. And for inference, uh, we are almost like 10x more cost effective than the existing solutions that are out there. Uh, this presentation will be made available. So if you want to, you know, take a note on the numbers or anything, you can refer back to the later. So to summarize on a personal language model, uh, our core thesis is it's accessible to everybody. Everybody gets to train and control their own model. The memory uh, pretty much determines the use case as well as the output of that particular model. There is heavy emphasis on the accuracy of these models. They are really good if you do not want it to hallucinate. Uh, it's really good. We developed the platform, which is also a no-code uh, platform. In other words, you will be able to train your own AI, and we'll get into how to do that a little bit uh, today as well. Um, and finally, elevated uh, authenticity, which is identity and the ownership. So we talk, We basically did a Model 1 uh, launch back in April. So thanks a lot for all the people who have joined and who are here uh, uh, again for, for supporting Model 2. Uh, over the past six months, or more, we have worked with many different of our users as well as customers. Um, so a lot of our Model 2 development uh, actually is pretty involved uh, with our own customers. So thanks a lot to the you know community uh, that is already in here. So to summarize on the Model 1, people who are not familiar with Model 1, we have released the system uh, which has composed of long-term memory. Um, the PLM itself is a ensemble of you know, three to three unique models as well as a fourth model called unified rank and model. Those models are QNA model as well as a retrieval model that is rack based and a generative model, which is a user GPT uh, based. And it has its own embedding, meaning every model has its own embedding. And a unified rank and model basically governs uh, each of these tiny little models that is fundamentally trained on that long term memory of, of a specific uh, 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 model. In our case, we essentially have that identity, which means it replicates or it reflects an individual uh, person. The two key use cases with model one that were unlocked is uh, asking questions and as well as generating the content. Uh, that was you know, uh, in April. In model two, uh, we have unlocked um, not only long-term memory, but also short-term memory. So now the conversation has the short-term memory. It uses a mix of both short-term as well as uh, long-term. Um, it is. It, 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 we also introduced the conversation model. The good news is this has been in testing for around two to three months. We've been continuously tuning it uh, uh, for the past. So people who are jumping on model two, you will have an advantage of pretty much you know starting with uh, uh, the current version of the conversation model. We have introduced a personal language model and a LLM hybrid model. This is really um, you know uh, coming from like the community, and some of the use cases in here would include. Uh, combining my uh, memory, uh, but in the synthesis or in the context of the LLM itself. A simple example could be, you know, based on my understanding of personal language models, what are the other architectural references that I could uh, look in? And then, you know, it combines, you know, PLM as well as LLM hybrid uh, techniques. Uh, Multi-persona model is something that we introduced. Each personal language model has its um, has an architecture where you can um, have multiple different personas underneath it. This works very well for individual as well as as an organization. For an individual, you could um, essentially uh, create multiple different identities, like my professional, my personal, my work related, my family. Uh, all those things can be managed and all rolls up into an organizational AI. And I will have an example later on. Um, finally, um, uh, really cool. It's like at early stages, but we do uh, we we did introduce voice clone as part of the model too, uh, as well as voice message generation that will uh, essentially not only uh, replicate your mind but also replicate your voice. Um, we do have personal image generation system that is also embedded into model two as well. Um, in the future, you could expect more developments in that area, which are in a uh, uh, purple color. So multi persona model. Uh, you can replicate this for your organization too. Think about each of this persona as an employee. Uh, so if you are a business owner, 
you would imagine replicating an, a digital twin of your entire team. If you are an individual person where you have multiple different businesses or multiple different personas or multiple different personalities in the personal life, you can choose and structure and control this each individual multiple persona because they all come with their own access control. So, you know, past uh, three to four years, our system architecture has always been influenced by this so-called, you know, based on like a human, like how things work, uh, you know, the term like human operating system and the companies like human AI labs. So we, you know, with model one, we introduced long-term memory. With model two, we introduced short-term memory. Uh, with model two, we also have like speech and visual pieces coming in. So this is the whole like human operating system that is being replicated in uh, into, into PLM. Um, so this is sort of like an API of you or API to you. Um, you know, unlike API to an open AI model, this is an API to an individual model. Uh, let's get into a little bit more details. On the application side of things, it's not only model development that we do. We have built pretty much an entire full stack of application for developers, for businesses, for personal needs, as well as for you know specific uh, external needs as well. So at the basic, we talked about long-term memory, uh, which is rooted in your personal data. Uh, the second key aspect is the personal language model itself, uh, which continuously scales. We talked about that. On the, uh, the, the every model gets its own API. API supports ingestion of the data, which is your new memory, as well as uh, messaging your AI, which is your inference. Uh, then we do have the apps. So for a no-code developer or a no-code business owner or a no-code uh, personal reason, they can simply use the uh, applications which is Windows, Mac, iOS. We are still working on Android. Uh, it does take like a lot of operational effort for us to you know get the approvals and get it out. But we will be we have that in progress. We'll release that. We promise. And finally, this agent ecosystem. The way to think about agents is simply uh, bots or integrations that can be made available in multiple different places. That is based on fundamentally the API to each of your models. So it's a full blown uh, system that is like entirely in your control. Um, how it works, um, pretty straightforward from like how we would want to think about it, but a little bit unique because it's not just a model where people would come in and use it as much as you would come in, you would train it, and then you would use it. So you could uh, choose to have all your historical data, uh, assuming a PLM has the identity of a person you know, articles that person has written, books the person has written, the transcription of data, any authored content that you would want your model to replicate and uh, you, uh, reflect with your own identity because it's representing you uh, or your brand for that matter, uh, that can go into your model. Continuous data, continuous data is very important because it's almost like the reinforcement learning that happens. Messages, conversations, feeds could also feed into your stack. Um, ultimately, um, it's, um, uh, you know, on the output side, uh, there is multi-channel, which is like email, text messenger, Instagram, so you can drop it in anywhere. And now we are starting to get model to more and more closer to this multi-model concept, uh, which is not only text, but also audio, voice, and images, all those things are coming together, including the conversation model. So that's kind of the um, how it works, um, you know, in, in its entirety, like how all the pieces are put together. Now, uh, super uh, uh, important piece, like you probably have not heard of this concept of personal score outside in the you know general AI space, but each PLM and each AI response on PLM has something called a personal score. So when a message is sent to a personal model, it will essentially determine uh, if it can reply and construct a response based on your PLM data uh, without relying on the LLM. If it doesn't, then it uses uh, you know, external sources of the data, which is essentially reflected in the personal score. So anything that is less than 30% um, means that it is not personal, meaning it is using large language model data to give you a draft so that way you can construct a meaningful um, uh, you know, response, but at the same time, you can use that and uh, um, edit the memory and add it to your memory to make it personal. Uh, most of our customers, uh, they, after the initial bootstrap, pretty much for all the topics, they range like north of 50%. And that means it's, you know, um, very accurate information that is coming in. Um, the system is designed to have like me and Maya in the loop. So a human is always in the loop. Uh, so it's like one object where think about a user in a WhatsApp or a Slack. 
it's not just a account of a user it's a account of a user plus users ai so they're like one entity one object and they have full control over how that ai functions um so uh, in in essence the application layer is a full blown like you know human ai communication platform a good example for this one is um slack or whatsapp like communication system where every team member inside the company every employee inside the company has their own ai that is continuously learning over a period of time and that exchange of knowledge or information or personality between those two people is now augmented or extended by their own ai uh, we have this modes of autopilot copilot which we can get into detail in the application layer but you know generally private chats shared chats public domains are all possible in terms of how you would want to uh, share your ai use cases uh, the way to think about use cases is like model one use cases uh, we talked about like long term historical knowledge and factual information any retrieval of factual information uh, from your existing documents transcripts facts or beliefs or uh, you know uh, specific policies uh, model one is really good uh, in generally speaking like you know accurate retrieval of information now with model two, there is a lot more that is happening in terms of contextually relevant pieces of information for connecting the dots uh, across uh, not just like a research use case within your own self, but also being able to synthesize uh, uh, deeper. With model two, you have the short-term memory. So it's not just a prompt and a response or a prompt and a content or you know, a question and an answer, but as much as uh, you are having this natural dialogue between you, your AI, are between somebody else and your AI. Uh, so that's kind of like this, uh, the, the use cases. Um, one, now that we have model two, conversational use case, like automated conversations uh, use case will also get unlocked. And the system is continuous, right? Because you have uh, multiple people involved, because you have this training concept uh, involved, the memory is continuously getting updated going into the long-term memory. So, uh, yeah, so that's that's essentially uh, a little bit overview on the technology as well as model architecture and the differences between model one and model two, uh, uh, and just thinking through how the use cases would perform. Uh, at this time, I would stop sharing my um, presentation and sh uh, start sharing my uh, entire screen. So give me one second here. For each of the personas, there is a little settings icon that we can use it to train and upload the long-term memory. Uh, so let's pick an example of um, a business partner. If I go into business partner, and if I look at my identity, um, it is national, it's friendly and con consistent. You can specifically choose a specific trait and the communication style as well, whether you would want it to be concise or conversational or empathetic and formal. Um, for each of the identities, you could have specific memory types. This depends on specifically what you are trying to achieve, anywhere from your background to manuscripts to about me. So I will just uh, pick a few of these in here, uh, not necessarily personal journals. And once you are able to select uh, any of these different types of memory types, you could upload them. This is a process that I would encourage people uh, to do because that creates your unique like memory in the basics and both um, I guess long-term memory, the short-term memory, the uh, uh, conversation models such as like RAG, QA, everything gets spun up. So your starting point is like much more uh, fruitful and immediately deployable. Uh, so this is the work that we will, that that you you could technically do. Um, once the training will kick off, it usually takes around you know an hour or two for the initial bootstrap. But then after the initial bootstrap training is done, it's pretty fast. Uh, in the settings. Um, is where you would want to choose public, shared, or private. These are all part of your like model two rollout, meaning uh, whatever like the subscription that you choose, you would get the API, and you will be able to deploy into multiple different um, uh, uh, multiple different agents. And we will have some examples of those later today as well. All right, we'll start with the demo, uh, and we'll stick with the concepts of PLM that we just discussed. On the right-hand side is ChatGPT. On the left-hand side is my own personal AI. So let's uh, begin by asking about PLM to both my personal AI and ChatGPT and see what they think. Mm 
while ChatGPT loads. Um, on my personal AI, APLM is a personal language model. It's an advanced AI system that is designed and understand and generate human-like text. It does highlight specific to individual user, and it does highlight, you know, in the context of, um, you know, some of the use cases on how proprietary knowledge can be, you know, enhanced. That is my description of APLM. And it is 69% personal, so it's fairly accurate, um, you know, on, on you know, that is grounded in my memory. On the right-hand side, ChatGPT, Things PLM is a product lifecycle management, which is completely fine because it's essentially coming from a general knowledge information. So what I would do is um, I would just tell ChatGPT, no, 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 this is Suman Kanaganti. This is what PLM means to me. Uh, then it has that context, you know, within that conversational setting of what a PLM is. And I can now kind of associate that with uh, things such as like, what is the difference between PLM and uh, LLM? So let me actually do that in action. Okay, great. Uh, can you list? <clears throat> okay, so now um, that I sent the differences, um, what will happen is on ChatGPT, it is using the context window within the same uh, conversation to be able to associate the difference. Well, it still is using the product lifecycle management because it is within the same context window. So even though you're trying to tell or fix that it is different, it still errs back onto the PLM. I actually want to force ChatGPT to say PLM is personal language model. Okay, now it is agreeing to PLM is a personal language model. So I will just take the same prompt. Let me try it again. Um, okay, that's great. So now I forced it to use the context window, but you would essentially have to, you know, do all these series of steps for forcing a LLM to understand your context. So because it's all uses the short-term context window. The, in the case of personal language model, everything is grounded within your memory. So there is no like you know um, need of maintaining everything in the context window and say it over and over again. So in this case, I simply asked it to you know create respondent HTML and I forced it to give me a differences in the tabular format. And it is fetching pretty much using my entirety of memory, what is a PLM and LLM, but still has that context of the short term context of what is what is at the topic that we can you know clearly start a new conversation in here uh, for this part of the demo let me close chat gpt make it full screen so now i can start like a new conversation um and then also say <clears throat> i would want to use my entirety of the memory and then create a uh, long form content and then i will basically have a conversation with my own ai to showcase some of the other cool things. <clears throat> I'm gonna continue a new conversation and then show you some of the conversations that I had. Tell me about PLM. So we talked about uh, fetching everything from your memory and it spit it out. And then I can continue the conversation, like why are they important? Well, PLMs are important because this is a personalized extension of our knowledge and personality. So in this scenario, you're not necessarily, you know, writing a prompt as much as you're actually having a conversation with yourself. Uh, and you can go deeper and deeper about it. Okay, can you write an article about it? Um, then I got an article, but however, I want it to be a little bit more readable. So I would say, please respond uh, in HTML with headings and sections. Then, you know, I would have a reasonable uh, article that I can copy and then, you know, paste it and then ship it out. Uh, I continue the conversation with writing the differences between PLMs and LLMs. 
uh, it's again uses entirety of my own memory as well as uses the short-term composition of what is happening in that context to give me a reasonable response. So I got, uh, uh, I always talk about LLMs as made from computers and PLMs as personal computers. So it is fetched from my new memory because as you can see, it's not in any of the short-term memory that that uh, uh, I was you know talking about LLMs. So then comes, okay, um, again, I would want to format this a little bit, format the differences between uh, uh, in HTML. So I got the main differences. Uh, it would be nice to actually put in a tab tabular format. So I asked it to put in a tabular format. So you can see how it becomes more human-like conversation to kind of, you know, have um, uh, retrieval, research, brainstorm, ideation sessions within, you know, with your own mind uh, that is in an entirety of with your uh, own memory. And I continue the conversation, which is more about telling me about its architecture. Well, now I get more information about the architecture. So I would put all this piece of information, which is architecture, the LLM differences, as well as why they are important. And then I would expect it to write a, you know, medium article that includes all of this information, which is now an another option. It's like, this is what I would want to use. Well, um, we were talking about multimodal and benefits to the uh, model too. Um, one of the key elements is we have integrated like image models in there. So the use cases for these image models is more about how do you leverage your own memory to kind of, you know, imagine the visual scenes uh, that is inspired, you know, like you, like, you know, almost like mimicking uh, how you would want to think about it. Rather than describing entirety of the image, you can now use PLMs to actually imagine based on your own memory. So in this case, I mean, it was obviously a very techni technical uh, concept that we are going through, which is personal language model. But I, I ask my AI, imagine a visual scene to depict the emotional connection of PLMs as described above, because, you know, we talk about this idea of PLM extends, you know, who you are. And uh, there we go. As Suman Kanaganti, I imagine a visual scene that depicts the emotional connections of PLMs. Um, and this goes into the imagination part, right? The interesting thing is this is still 66% personal, meaning the information is accurate, but the imagination is coming from the AI, which is pretty fascinating. So I take this information, I copy into my message bar, and then I draft an AI image. So this AI image is now generated here, right? So I was, I, was, I was basically like using my entirety of the memory to not only like create this article, but also some inspiration uh, into image generation that is relevant to that particular piece of article. So the, the idea of the multimodal um, exists, but this is multimodal in the context of personal memory personal knowledge, which I think is fascinating. Um, so that's, you know, me and my AI conversation. Uh, next part of the demo, let's get into chats. For the second part of the demo, um, I would want all of you to essentially scan the QR code and then talk to my AI. This is the use case of, you know, being in multiple places at the same time. And this core idea of like, how can you have all your agents to stand in for you on your behalf? Uh, so let me pop in my QR code here. Um, I have some example questions that you can uh, uh, talk, but um, you can text me as well, uh, which is my AI phone number in here. Uh, if you scan the QR code from mobile phone, you'll go into the app and friend me and then talk to me. Uh, there's public chat as well. If you don't want to create a login, simply go to s.personal.ai and hit public chat so you can talk to me. And finally, um, I do have my Facebook Messenger integrated. Um, if you go to s.personal.ai, you can click on the Facebook and then go to Facebook Messenger. So I will give two minutes and uh, um, for, for you to have this conversation and I will show you some of the use cases on, on my side. Let's go ahead and do it. Okay, great. So um, on my side, I was basically going through all the different uh, conversations. So let me go ahead and uh, show it to you. I opened up majority of them. <clears throat> Um, let's look at a couple of conversations in here from Ryan. Ryan asked, like, how do I activate model two? Like, boom, to activate model two, you already start using it because we already rolled it out. So it's good to go. Um, let's look at, uh, Faisal. <clears throat> Faisal talked to me about potentially integrating with SAP. 
And here's an interesting thought as well. This is 62% personal because based on my technical background and uh, it's a conversations that I'm potentially having with the customers, it is able to create a very thoughtful response that it can be powerful implementing AI in your apps as it provides services and tools for deploying and managing applications. Um, in other words, we are essentially talking about like, you know, integrating personal AI into the system. The beautiful part is he had this conversation, looks like, um, <clears throat> and now I can uh, simply summarize this conversation. Uh, uh, in this situation, since I want to use my AI to generate this, I would use AI instructions and I would ask draft from the AI. And for this use case, I can also ask ChatGPT. So let's use that functionality. Uh, in other words, I'm not going to use any of my long-term memory. I just want to summarize this particular conversation that exists uh, with Faisal. Cool. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to definitely talk to Faisal about it, but I can also send that information back. So if you see what's happening in here, it's it's more like a Slack communication or teams, uh, you know, team communication setting where every team member has their own AI and this communication becomes like a lot more effective if that information is already in your memory, then you are fetching it and you're not necessarily waiting for another employee, another team member, another community member to, uh, to come and respond to you. You know, we had this hundreds in Gmail and it's moved from 200 in Slack. And the goal is, well, if you have your AI standing in for you, you know, 60 to 70% of those hundreds are already addressed. Uh, finally, let me also open one more example here. Um, these are our existing uh, customer who actually already have integrated personal AI into their everyday life, both personal as well as professional. In this case, I'm going to showcase a lot more business use cases. Uh, Tela uses it for internally for her team use cases. Her pretty much communication to her team is expanded now, you know, within the personal AI ecosystem with her own AI. Uh, Jacob is a lawyer. He uses personal AI for qualifying the leads because he gets hundreds or thousands of people around the globe wanting to be his clients, but obviously not all the cases can be addressed in terms of immigration. He's a specific immigration lawyer. And Bob is a uh, is justice lawyer. He uh, uses personal AI specifically for accurate retrieval of information as well as like research information between uh, multiple different uh, uh, cases uh, that he deals with. And finally, Christine Ha, she's a master chef. She uses her AI to kind of influence her fans with her cooking and in the um, you know, pretty much uh, everything that she is. So let's get into uh, Jacob real quickly here. So if I go into Jacob, <clears throat> okay. Um, for the purpose of demo, I already have the conversation in here. Uh, I asked, hey, Jacob, my brother has a 14-year-old son in India. He wants to pursue his studies here in the U.S. Can I sponsor his visa? This is very specific to me. And Jacob says, yes, you can sponsor your nephew's visa to study in the U.S. Um, if somebody, if the general information were to be available already, even if it is same, I wouldn't trust it because it's not coming from Jacob. Uh, so this is almost like a verified and trusted piece of information that, you know, his clients would rely on. So there is so much about identity and the ownership of this particular model and what it actually says, what they actually say. Um, this is Christian Ha's lounge it's called it's the blind goat blind goat is a restaurant in this case christian Ha also has voice uh, so i went ahead and asked yeah my favorite uh, is street food style so let me hear how what she has to say that's great to hear street food style maggie noodles sound delicious i love exploring different street food dishes from around the world it's amazing how a simple dish like noodles can be transformed into something so flavorful and satisfying so this will be turning into a talk experience, but these are like voice messages that you can hear from her own voice. Now I continue my conversation on what my recipe is, right? Uh, and not only I provided my recipe to her, but I also added to the memory. And then we are having a conversation. We are having a conversation about my recipes uh, with her own memory, with her own AI. And then I continued uh, the conversation by creating or imagining a visually stunning photo of Maggie. Um, let's jump into Apple. 
Apple app. Uh, he's the uh, rapper at Black Eyed Peas. He has a great story. He comes from Philippines and he wants to connect to his fans, but he's also really good when it comes down to rapping the music in his own style because he's a rapper. It's a technical concept of PLM. And uh, I asked him to wrap the information because I'm heading to an offsite. I want to wrap it. Um, well, there we go. Um, this would be entirely different, you know, based on each person's style. It's kind of grounded in their style. Let me go ahead and play this example. Yeah, let me break it down for you. Sumer Kanaganti PLM, personal language models. That's what it stands for. It's, fun part. it's a cutting edge tech designed to understand and generate human life text. It's like having a conversation with a mate built around human psychology. It knows what's up recently and facts. It keeps up with our lives. It would be cool to have like more punctuation in there, but it's always so much fun to wrap it up. Okay, so I'm going to go over the Q&A questions. <clears throat> um, there are already a whole bunch of questions that Sharon helped in answering, so I will not go over it. Can you stop the slides regenerating, please? I cannot read them. Um, I will provide the slides link immediately in Loma after this, so you will have them. Grant says, will model B, model two be able to proactively post questions to the person they are interacting with in order to flesh out the topics being discussed? Uh, the short answer is yes. And most of the proactive posing questions is relevant to the topic of the conversations that you are having. There may be some more settings and controls that we are working on for you to more uh, tune what questions proactively that the model would pose. But right now, it all revolves around the context and the conversation that is happening. Alex says, when using your product for the use case of family par parent AI, where you would like your family to be able to interact with your memories forever, what assurances do we have that the model will continue to be accessible or downloadable by the owners? Um, downloadable by the owners is possible when we are able to port our models onto the edge. And our eventual goal is to have this on your devices, not only on mobile phones, but things such as, you know, Alexa devices that are sit sitting at home. We have, you know, two to three different devices that we are working on, but it likely take anywhere between nine to 12 months before we can fulfill this core idea of like, hey, downloading the model and putting it on a device. Memory download and model download for ownership reasons, we probably will be able to do that, you know, much sooner. Family interactions, I would want in either a hologram or a voice-based uh, interactive device at home. Team Jung says, and is it English only or different languages possible? The memory is English only. However, inference can be in multiple different languages. One of the customers, Hemant Parekh, he had essentially developed support for 19 different languages. It's hemantparekh.ai, uh, based in India. So input questions and input conversations happen in a local language, output also happens in local language, but the memory and the model itself is in um, uh, English. Can we implement this in SAP BTB? Well, um, we would definitely need more and more developers to kind of create and increase the agent ecosystem surrounding personal AI. Currently we have agents within um, uh, SMS, we have agents for uh, Messenger, Slack that are coming up. Uh, but there is no limitation on, you know, creating these agents that talks to personal language models. And CRM systems is also pretty interesting because then you would have insights into individual person's perspective. Um, yeah, Sharon, you want you want to step in into the camera? At least, like, show your face in the camera. Can we make it? Can we make it multi-language like English and Arabic and make Arabic to be more trained on local Arabic and general Arabic? Is that possible? You know what? That's a good question because that's definitely for Sharon. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we got a few questions on different type of languages. Right now, Germanic language and Latin-based languages should work well. Uh, we are looking into some options for more like Asian languages or Arabic languages. 
um, but that's on our, I wouldn't say near term roadmap, but maybe like a longer term roadmap. But if you have specific languages that you want to be able to see, um, please head over to roadmap.personal.ai and send us a feature request. Um, that's the, probably the best way to help us prioritize things for you guys. Yeah. And um, it's just a quick note on that experiment we just did two minutes, hundred conversations. That was cool to see. Thanks a lot for everybody to participate who participated. Um, Alex says way to go. Great stuff. Thank you. And I think somebody else also provided feedback on the chat to, um, speak slow and actually have a lot more clarity on the content you know from now on there is a initiative inside the company to have more specific use cases specific uh youtube videos to showcase like how to do it we do have two methods you know which is like uh, as training from a business standpoint for for uh, uh business users but professional users uh uh individual influ you know influencers as well as freelancers can train their own AI as well. Uh, so we'll be putting up like a lot more content out because we've been heads down just uh, trying to get model two out and you know building all the things that make up the value for this personal language model. So thanks a lot for that and patience. Uh, is there a dashboard of type of the data within stacks? Is there a dashboard? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, we had exposed the topics before, but I don't think there's a data analytics dashboard. Yeah, we don't currently have analytics around it, but we are going to introduce something that allows you to sort by source, like where the data is coming from, uh, or potentially tag. Um, but our focus has been mainly on the messaging part and less of the memory stack part. But if you have very specific feature requests, um, also let us know. Happy to take that into account. Yeah. Um, Alex, thank you. Uh, any restrictions of businesses, startups building commercial products or offerings on top of this model, leveraging your API? Uh, well, I mean, the whole point is to leverage the personal language models and do it your way. Uh, as part of our business contracts, we do have commercial licenses that are available. So based on your business need, we can make uh, the commercial license also available. Uh, so the short answer is no restrictions. You know, the 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 key is to build build it your way. Um, presentation will be shared. I will be able to add this to my own memory after this presentation is done. Uh, so I, we will share it via Luma, but you can simply ask my AI as well for sharing the model two presentation. I will add it to the memory. Can we in the future edit the chat window, <clears throat> uh, the embedded option, and decide what element to show? We are thinking to see a simple window like chat GPT window. So if you go to s.personal.ai, there is a public chat that is already available. We will be making a similar chat window, more like iframeable chat window that you can embed within your website. But for now, I've seen customers actually take that public chat window and embed within their web website as well in an, in an iframe or code it entirely using the API. So that's possible. Can I say something now? Yeah. Okay. Is it a good idea to train it with latex files? Oh, this is your question. Yeah. It's the... Uh... Oh. Uh, right now, the AI struggles slightly with formulas and numbers. Um, so I think it will be a little bit hard um, to do that at the moment, unless you're purely retrieving specific literal information. If so, there is a form I can fill out. Uh, I don't know which form you are talking about, but there are links um, on the screen that you can you can yeah, I think uh, use. It's a business one that you're referring to. Um, so yeah. head over to personal-ai.com um, and then you can see our business offerings. Is this like what Fetch is doing? I actually don't know what Fetch is. Fetch AI? Uh, yeah, Fetch AI. Oh, I see. Um, what are your thoughts? Good question. Uh, I think Fetch is more on the infrastructure agent building side, and it's more geared towards developers. Our code, uh, our system is more or less a no-code system uh, that's really made for anyone to be able to use it. Um, so I think that's probably the essential difference. We kind of serve a different audience. Yeah. Um, 
I think we could probably leverage Fetch AI to build like agents for your underlying models, like PLM models. Uh, I don't know what are all the models that actually Fetch AI supports. Most likely it's going to be large language models. Uh, but if you do indeed want to build your personal language model and build agents using other tools, that's that's totally cool as well. Will model be able to auto-correct? Um, so it doesn't do it directly in the message bar, but once you send a paragraph that you want it to correct, it will correct the um, misspellings and grammar and things like that. Yeah. What steps to integrate the API into chat feature? Uh, you probably need a developer if you want um, to directly develop on your website, Jackie. But however, there are two to three different options to use, you know, um, uh, such as like using the public chat and iframe. Um, and other customers have so far embedded directly into the system. Can you use any type of API to add MetaHuman as part of this? Yeah, that's interesting. I was just looking at MetaHuman. So as part of the um, model to launch later in the sequence, we'll introduce the avatar feature. Uh, it will be based on NVIDIA at the moment, um, but MetaHuman is definitely something I'm also looking at for avatar technology. Yeah. Uh, resources, I actually have multiple different links on the resources. Uh, training workshop is a good one to uh, come over because we'll get deeper and then we'll, you know, you will, you'll be like certified training. Do personally have voice control feature during a conversation example, someone sends me a message and I can talk. So right now you can uh, set voice responses on or off to a specific individual. Uh, we are working on a talk experience um, instead of like a messaging experience that will likely take a few weeks to months. Uh, but yes, you can control the voice responses per launch as well as per individual person. Is it possible to toggle between co-pilot and autopilot? Absolutely. Uh, oh, depending on what the question is. Very good. So the way I would think about it is I would set the topics into a specific lounge and set the lounge to uh, autopilot or co-pilot. I don't think we got deeper into the lounges itself, um, but lounges is a place where you can have multiple humans with one AI. Uh, so that's kind of how you could operate it at this time. But uh, no, right? No, so um, one feature I think a few people asked about is like, what if there's no answer in my PLM and I don't want it to go anywhere else? So we'll be introducing an event setting where you can set up a kind of like a message if it doesn't meet a certain threshold. And in that case, the co-pilot response will be shown to you. Um, and in the case where it has a good answer, the autopilot message will be shown to the user. So um, it's coming up probably pretty soon, um, but the way to control that would be really just setting a threshold so your AI doesn't go out of scope. Evernote yeah, importer linkage would be great. <laughs> I want all the integrations as well. Uh, but right now, I think Zapier allows some Evernote uh, linkage and integration. Um, Zapier would be personal.ai slash Zapier. And uh, that may be a good choice for now. Uh, somebody mentioned something about investment. Yes, so we have currently a um, community slash customer offering, public offering that is live on republic.com. So it's republic.com slash personal dash AI. Anybody can invest and actually it's pretty good for taking advantage of the perks. If you are a you know, business owner, if you are a customer, you want to invest, you want to be part of you know, the most personal AI planet and the company and help us out uh, as well as you know, we will you know, help you by giving you an AI. Uh, please, please take actions. Um, and that's another thing. You know, the title for this slide is like choose personal, spread the word. Uh, there's obviously like a lot more use cases that LLM solves. We are in the early stages of giving people a choice to train their models using PLM approach and PLM technology. So if you're a developer or a business owner, uh, or a small business owner, you know, please, uh, please uh, uh, spread the word because these are good, accurate models. Lawyers are using it, so that means it must be really accurate. Uh, I'll go through your website to get some knowledge. Uh, what is the activation of the Android app schedule? I want to say weeks, but likely months. How should I train AI on a word list? I want to translate Danish words to Korean. Is that possible, embedding wise? 
Sorry, where is this? This is uh, translating Danish words to Korean. I think so, actually. I need to do some uh, testing, but I believe that's possible if you do like a pairing between, you know, this is Danish word and this is the Korean counterpart. I do believe it's possible. So um, send me a message in that. Uh, model to be able to auto correct. Yeah, generally, yes. Most of the words. Training workshop link. Uh, training workshop link. Uh, there are two types of training workshops. You can self-train. There are like three different webinars that I've done with our uh, community and customers that are on YouTube, but you can actually sign up to the training workshop that costs like 100,000 bucks, but we will certify you so that you can actually train and, you know, start becoming a, become a, uh, a freelancer as well, a personal AI trainer. How extensible, customizable can PLM be? Can I extend it to carry out Facebook functions? I mean, generally, yes, right? Um, depends on what the functions are. If you're talking about tools at the moment, no, there's no two integration uh, or function calls. Um, potentially looking at it into the future, but at the moment it will have to be somewhat like communication or language based task. Yeah. And I know we are getting top of the hour. So if people want to drop off, they can drop off, but we'll address the uh, rest of the questions in this chat here. Um, I can imagine German language would be cool. For input-output, German language is possible, actually. Uh, just the memory is in English. That's what I would suggest. I can imagine my kids and grandkids talking to my AI. Uh, well, my daughter already talks to my dad AI, which is me, uh, because I don't want my daughter to just rely on big tech Alexa AI, yeah, RCD AI. <laughs> I would rather have that influence. So yes, absolutely. And that's a use case that uh, existing customers also use, but we are obviously kind of also focusing on you know, delivering this AI is much faster um, um, in creating value. Can audio fragments in Dutch upload hmm, language? Um, the, the silent feature right now, you can actually transcribe a short amount of audio. Uh, we'll be launching a better interface in the future, um, but technically, yes. How many files I can upload? Many. Uh, which file types? Many. <laughs> I mean, it depends on the tier of service. Yeah. So to just to riff off like different types of uh, uploads, uh, YouTube video links, documents, Google documents, um, just generally internal documents Objects, as well. Objects, PDF, PDF, tax file, markup files, slides, audio files. In, yeah. In public chat, can users interact with your voice? Absolutely. Yeah. I need to just turn it on. I turned it off for this exercise because then it's like too much voice generation in one second, one minute. How can I activate the text-to-speech module in my personal AI? Right now it's in beta. Um, so if you're a premium user, you can ask me for the beta form. Um, AI.personal.ai is my domain. Yeah. Can we host in private cloud? Uh, yes. Uh, it's mostly likely going to be a business contract. Uh, so depending on... Um, yeah, depending depending on uh, how big the contract is, we can yeah definitely host in private cloud. Do you have anything in place once you train on chatbot to reduce hallucinations? Uh, well, I mean hallucinations is not a thing that normally happens, but I would want to see like what you would think. Generally, if you have enough memory, it doesn't hallucinate, right? Uh, so if you have a question, if you have a input prompt, if you have a topic, if you have a complex thing, if your PLM supports and if you have all the memory, there is no hallucination. And that's the reason why we are able to get, you know, accuracy that is needed by law and policy use cases and healthcare use cases as well. Um, so yeah, if you want accuracy, then this is the place to go. For content creators, is there a possibility or plan for integration with Discord server communities? Jeff, yeah, I think um, I've seen somebody do a Discord bot. It's not open source. You know, as part of this conversation, I also mentioned that we are trying to like create a, a open source ecosystem, but obviously we need to get it out there so that all these agents can be developed and it's available for the entire community. The short answer is, I mean, you can develop it or some other developer can develop it, um, uh, but but the, the, the API ecosystem is there. Richard says, what do you see are your key differentiators from other agents being touted in the market? Unique PLM trained approach, stronger overall privacy protections, no ads based business model, all of it. Plus, agent for me is simply an endpoint or a bot or a tasker, right? What we are achieving 
the 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 key thing is 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 the model like the memory and the model because once you have the memory and model that has an identity and the owner then you apply specific types of agents in specific types of use cases right i think what i see happening is there is an agent specifically for let's just say talking to a like, like law like understanding law but you know a specific lawyer in a specific like personal injury case may be entirely different right we are trying to carry the trust of a human or an identity into these agents and be responsible for what model is saying so i think it's it's like a different approach from my perspective uh but i'm sure there is going to be personal ai agents you were agents talking to other agents that's going to happen pretty soon is machine learning the only type of reasoning or intelligence modeling ai technique that personal ai uses besides um not sure i grasp the entirety of the question but yes i think in general machine learning technique is what we're using uh we do use it in complement with knowledge graphs to make it more grounded in the context but i think i guess knowledge graphs i also consider somewhat machine learning um Maybe the question Maybe. is like no dialogue, though, right? We don't have that. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, yeah, good point. We don't use the rule based system. Um, so there's no like dialogue flow or having to configure question answering pairs anywhere. Um, so the system can be more scalable. Yeah. Where can I get more specific information on your brand manager program? It's personal.ai slash affiliate. Uh, Carlos says works in in, only in English. Um, again, so memory has to be in English at this time because the embeddings do not support other languages. However, for questions and answers and inference, it can be in other languages. Where can I find for self-training? A uh, YouTube channel has three different webinars. It has a playlist for self-training. After the personal AI training for freelancer, will it be published on your website as a personal AI trainer? We haven't have mechanisms like right now, uh, but um, I mean, we have to develop some things around it, uh, but we'll definitely like certify you. So that we're trying to figure out like what systems to put in for a, a trainer and we'll give you all the information. Um, uh, so that way it's, it's authentic and credible. Certified, I guess is the right word. What if the data is on the public cloud, how can I safeguard our model from malware? Well, so every model has its own memory. And of course there are like safeguards around identity and key management that comes with it. So nobody can access it technically. Uh, but maybe in the future, if you download the model onto your desktop, I think that's where kind of the concepts of malware will come into play. Uh, but I don't think there are any issues with the malware at this time, given the architecture. Uh, we are building something similar, but hats off what you built so far. Thank you. Definitely see potential for collaboration here. Uh, how can we talk about partnership or collaboration? Well, um, uh, s.personal.ai is just not my AI. It's me as well. It's a full communication tool that I adapt. So, you know, please drop me a note and let me know. And uh, thank you. Carlos says, is there going to be an uh, integration with Twitter? <laughs> Twitter integration is notorious, right? <laughs> <laughs> so we used to have Twitter integration, but uh, Elon made it a bit too expensive for developers to develop on it, um, probably to keep the data more inside. Uh, we do have ways of uploading it if you can export it, so we can talk through details there if you want. Um, but currently, we don't offer it as a official integration because it costs quite a lot of money <laughs> to do that for us right now. Mm, moving memory to the blockchain, Xyler says eventually uh, is on the roadmap. Uh, correct that with Yeah, I mean, so there are two um, specifics on that one. One is uh, making the key management custodian by the users themselves. Uh, so there is a Sapphire, Sapphire integration that needs to be complete. Uh, we started the development that needs to be complete uh, uh, with the OSS Labs. And the second aspect is moving the memory onto the blockchain. Uh, I don't know if moving onto the edge comes first or moving onto the blockchain comes first, but intentions wise, yeah, you would essentially have like, you know, full uh, custody of your memory, either it would be a private key, or it would be uh, uh, on, on local devices. Uh, 
So likely the memory itself will not be stored on the blockchain because um, then it's sort of accessible. Um, so it will be kind of like a key management type of service that we essentially don't have any access to the encrypted keys uh, on your device. But like Suman said, the first step actually would be a private mode um, that simply runs on Edge. So you don't have to really upload data anywhere in the cloud. Yeah. Carlos says, sorry to hear that. Mm, is it about Spanish? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I see, I have like a lot of customers who use the inference in different languages, but uh, unfortunately the memory currently is in English. Spanish. Yeah, Spanish actually works pretty good. Uh, cool. I think that's all the open questions. Uh, thanks a lot. Of, thanks a lot for everybody for joining. And uh, we went a little bit over, but I'm sure people who wanted to drop off, they dropped off. Uh, we'll edit and maybe you know make the recording available as well. But more importantly, we'll make the presentation available. Thanks everybody. Cool. Okay. Bye. bye.